The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, sanctification followed by the spiritual growth demands Bible doctrine. The thorough knowledge of exegesis over isagogical and categorical explanation of the word, over the dispensing technique of dispensations, is what you and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have to give number one priority. And though we learn all the exegesis, all the isagogics, all the categories of the subject, and though we can rightly discern the word of the Lord through the doctrine of dispensations, if it is not been done by the thorough ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who permanently indwells in us, then everything is in vain. The doctrine of dispensations which could be taught, or exegesis could be taught, you can take it down to the reality, not as to stop the infection, but rather the thorough radical surgery which has to take place and it has to be the manner of your life, the manner of your breath, the manner of the true spiritual growth in Christ. Our Lord himself has emphasized for us to be sanctified with his truth, which is thy word. And we the people today are comprehending the methodologies of the standards of other religion works. We can also be sanctified, that's what they tell, when they could do some good works, gimmicks when they could clear their guilt consciousness, when they could follow this and follow that. But dear brethren, the ultima of the truth wherewith you and I have been given this number one priority, or wherein you and I have to give number one priority, is purely based upon the true work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. If it is not by the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, which has to enlighten us, which has to cause us to understand, which has to cause us to make known, there is no way, no procedure, no methodology that could stand at the judgment seat of Christ. When the decree was passed that they should be killed in the book of Daniel chapter 2, they went and they searched out Daniel because they knew Daniel was a man who could tell. And even the people of unbelievers in this world should search out the true Lord when you are standing there as a true pastor. Because of the royal commissions that have been given to us as a royal ambassador, as a royal priest. Not only the people should come and search out and seek you out only for a true pastor or a true evangelist or a pastor teacher. But the people should come and search out that we are the followers of the true great Lord. When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who permanently indwells in us, even the passage which he tells for us in Joel 2.27, they shall never be ashamed. What a great reality it will be for us that when Lord indwells in us, what a great reality that we shall never be ashamed. And to make known of the thorough inculcation of this indwelling, the love of our Lord which has been shed abroad upon our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible records, by the Holy Spirit. That we should be never be ashamed because it is his ministry that shall cause us to be standing firm at the judgment seat of Christ. 
And furthermore, in order to see that Lord God, the Trinity permanently indwells in you and you need to be aware of it. And the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has been shed across upon our hearts, which has to be permanent in willing towards us. And that we should not be ashamed, but rather we have been rightly divided. It is laid down upon the shoulders of a pastor teacher to inculcate Christ, to inculcate his mind, and to tell to the entire world what it would be that they are really following the word of the Lord. And this thorough inculcation has caused them and has led them to give top priority for the word. And this thorough inculcation which has caused them to give number one priority through his word is what the duty of a pastor teacher is, that he should not be ashamed when he appears at the judgment seat of Christ. But rather he should be a man as a bond slave that he has rightly divided the word of truth. And what a great privilege it would be for us that when we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, we have done his great work. We have done his great reality. We have done and shown forth and led the people to be founded and builded, grounded upon the Bible doctrine. So that they should not be ashamed because of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in their lives. When they appear at the judgment seat, they are going to be gold, silver, and precious stones. And never they will be afraid of the result. Never they will be afraid of the things they have done in their body. Because even the motives behind their thoughts will be absolutely pure to Christ. Even the motives will be absolutely holy unto Christ. And they are going to perform it without having any wrong motives in their mind. And even they, they will be rewarded for those motives, dear brethren. Because the responsibility which has been laid down upon their shoulders, they have done it thoroughly without failing. What a great privilege it would be for us to see that great Lord judging even our motives. What a privilege it would be for us to look and to say, yes, Lord, we had a clear list. And we are without blame. Though Lord has caused us to stand blameless at the judgment seat of Christ, in Jude 24, 25, we find spotless and blameless. But our execution of the life on this church age, our each and every thought that we have been kept alive in this church age, have they been aligning to him? Though you learn all these things without the true ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, everything is vain, dear brethren. The true ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will cause you to be humble will cause you to be subjected to the growth of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. It will cause you to make it to understand more clearly the importance of the word. It will never give you anything apart from the word to be number one priority. Because the prayer which has been laid, prayed by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it has been laid down in the Bible, penned in for us. We need to know that prayer demands the knowledge of Bible doctrine. We need to know that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Paraclete Guide, the Helper, the Teacher, the Divine Mentor, when it comes, is going to use that word to keep us sanctified and not to be indulged in this world. And to be separated from this world, it demands the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Not just the basics, but it demands a maturity level to discern what is right and what is wrong. Today people think, let us stop infectious diseases so that morally we could be fine and we can stop. No, but the Bible doctrine demands a thorough radical surgery. That thorough radical surgery which could be obtained by the process of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in rightly dividing the word of truth. That thorough process demands the process of sanctification in our soul. A thorough inculcation of the mind of Christ. And how can you be thoroughly inculcated if you are not able to follow the great process of training, which is a day by day? Instantaneously, if you could lighten a spark, you will never understand the pain when two stones have been brought together to ignite the spark. And whether those stones taken are really worth to ignite the spark or not. Whether the spark which has been ignited by them, carefully you can turn it into fire or not. You know, it's a process. Exactly the day-by-day -day edification of the soul is a process. Why the Bible has been given to us to preach from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21.
some of the foolish morons will say Bible is not required for us in the Old Testament of the Old One. It is only in the New Testament. But the thorough inculcation, which when we can understand the responsibility of a watchman through the Ezekiel, whom God strengthens, even we as a pastor teachers should note it is God's strength on our behalf that we are able to communicate his word. And if it is not his strength to give us to communicate this word according to the operative power of his ministry of light, God, the Holy Spirit, which permanently indwells in each and every believer, we are no one to take and to tell for you the importance. Neither we will be anything in the sight of the Lord. Our words will be only over here on this earth. Our words may not even pass the roof where we are preaching the word of the Lord. Or the first heaven where it can go. But since we have been given this bona fide gift, since we have been given the true responsibility of a pastor teacher, we need to be very careful that each and every word which has been taken, which have to be inculcated day by day, and it's a process, process, process. It's a day by day training process. We cannot stop here for one thing. We have to go in for day by day process, 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 diligently studying the word of the Lord. And what a great work it would be for us to diligently study Bible doctrine and to give number one priority for it. As those two, two stones which have to be collected first which could really ignite. Likewise, when we will collect the right past teacher when we are collecting our hearts straight with Jehovah to have a right and true fellowship with him, then Lord will give that spark to look and to understand. When Jonah preached, the people repented. When Isaiah preached, though the people never repented, but he had a ministry towards his hand. When Jeremiah preached, people thought he was telling blasphemy and they slapped him, telling that we will not listen, come, let us go and curse him. And when the time of Ezekiel comes, Lot tells, Do not worry whether they hear or forbear, your work is to go and tell. I have made you adamantly flint stronger than their adamant nature. If their rebellious was 99.9%, .9%, then Lord said to his kid, I have made your mind more stubborn, and I have made it 199.9% .9 tougher than them you go. The true repentance will be the sign in the sight of Jehovah when they really ignite the spark. The true change of mind towards Bible doctrine when Peter preached, 3,000 people came. They wanted to know who is this true Lord. And do you know all the time what Lord God the Holy Spirit does? It doesn't place you upon you the greater burden which you think it is greater burden for you to study the word of the Lord. Or to give number one priority for Bible doctrine. No, no way, no chance at all. Lord God, the Holy Spirit gives to you which is capable to be done only by the Spirit so that it is not possible to be done by your human flesh. And it places upon you only that burden which Lord God, the Holy Spirit, seems fit. And if you are capable of carrying the gift of a past teacher in eternity past, Lord knows whether you can carry it or not, and then only it is going to give to you at the moment of salvation. If you are not, Lord is not going to impose to you that gift. Though you may desire to be a pastor, though you may desire to be a communicator, you will not be given this bona fide gift. Lord knows who are his people. Lord knows who can carry this burden. And carrying this burden demands daily preparation, temporary sacrifice of your life. Not to worry about the softness. Your income will be cut off when you tell the truth about the post-canon period and the defunct spiritual gifts which have been seized and the permanent spiritual gifts which are into force. So what? Whether they are here or not, whether they recognize you or not, whether they give you name or fame or not, who the hell cares? Do you know why? Because our name and our fame should come from heaven. We are looking for that in the heaven. What are we right now? We are unprofitable slaves. We are here to do that which is God's work that has to be done. If Lord Jesus Christ would have been here, he would have done better work than us. What are we doing? We are nothing. We are wasting our time. Only giving in a day, two hours, 40 minutes back to God to do his work. Do you think it's a great work? No. The Lord would be thoroughly inculcated to do his work more efficiently, more eminently. But since we are having other obligations as well in the old sin nature, we are not capable of doing it, and that's not an excuse because Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the one who really masters over their old sin nature, even they will be given the crown. 
ultimately given to you so that you are not into the worldly consciousness, but you have to be unworldly through the sanctification process of His Word. And that burden is not been carried by you because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You can come and carry it out. And we are not the people who are going to think that our Lord is not capable, so he has put that shoulders responsibility upon us. No, Lord can do better work than you through the cigarette birds. Far less you can think that Lord cannot get out without me. It is you you cannot get out without Christ. Christ can easily get along. You may not think, you may think several times, Christ cannot get along without me even an inch. He needs my ministry. He needs my fakery of feelings. He needs my fakery of speaking in tongues. He needs my miracles. Just shut out. It is what you cannot get out without Christ. God can get out without you very easily. And he can get going. It is a great humble privilege that Lord has bestowed upon us this gift. And we need to be readily available. Like those watchers who are readily available to do God's will. Alien means Elohim. And many of the people do not know what is that alien. And they are having their minds to be thinking of those things which the Bible has rejected long back. Dear brethren, the great privilege that has been given to us, we have to get back into the reality of Bible doctrine. The appearances of those cherubs, the appearances of those cherubs were matching with those deeds. And we have been given the appearances of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And are we really showing forth the deeds pertaining to Christ? Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we continue this discourse in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will return us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.